Hello everybody and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. In today's story, I'll be bringing you a message from the deep, as told by our greatest messenger from the deep, deep, deepest parts of the earth. This is a mineral you all know. It's a mineral you all probably wish you had. It's a mineral called diamond. I'm going to tell you the story of diamond. Diamond is our greatest messenger from the deep, and I'm going to show you a real diamond. It's in this little box right here. Now, diamonds are very rare. They're very hard to find, and it's very hard to find the pretty ones with the beautiful colors in the fire, but let me take this one out of my little box, and I can show you what this one looks like up close. It's kind of hard to see. But there it is right there. This diamond is brown, and it's got a little bit of shine to it if you get it just the right light. But sometimes, there you go, you can kind of see it's got some shine. In fact, I can make it, see that little triangular face there lighting up? That little triangle is because this has triangular crystal faces. This diamond crystal has the shape of an octahedron. Eight triangular sides is what that diamond looks like. Most diamonds have the shape of octahedron. And I'll put that one over here. Sometimes they're cubes, but this one is an octahedron. And diamonds are exciting because they're pretty and they're valuable. And we like to put them on our rings and jewelry and crowns and things like that. But I want to tell you the story of that diamond. Now, I told you that they're messengers from the deep. It turns out diamonds are made out of carbon, pure carbon, the same stuff that our graphite, maybe our pencil rock, was made out of carbon. To make the graphite, we had to heat, heat, heat the carbon up really high temperature. That's not how you make a diamond. To make a diamond, you need pressure. You have to push it deep, deep, deep down so it squeezes so tight that it turns into diamond. So if diamonds come from so deep, what kind of rock do you think that they're in? They form in the mantle. And remember, our mantle rock, our peridotite, this is the kind of rock that diamonds are in. So how do we find diamonds at the surface if they're from so deep in the mantle. Well, it's the same way that we got these chunks of the mantle to the surface because they were brought here in volcanoes, volcanic eruptions. And in fact, the special kind of volcanic eruption that brings up the diamonds is called a kimberlite. That's named after the town of Kimberley, South Africa, where these kinds of eruptions have occurred in the past. No one has ever seen a kimberlite erupt, but if you look at their shape today, these or go through long, long pipes. It's like a very narrow pipe all the way to the deep mantle. And those volcanic eruptions are charged up with gases, water and CO2 and other gases so that when they erupt, they explode to the surface with great force and great velocity. And on their way, blah, 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 they rip off all those little chunks from the mantle, including our diamonds, our greatest messenger from the deep, now, the kimberlites kind of crumble apart and break down, but the diamonds are tough. They're hard. There's no other mineral in the world harder than diamond. So those little messengers from the deep hold on to their stories. They hold on to their stories of the deep, deep earth. If you're lucky, you can look inside a diamond using your hand lens or magnifying glass, and you can look not just for the diamond itself, but see if the diamond has inside tiny inclusions, we call them mineral inclusions, of other stuff from the mantle. And there was a story recently where a scientist from Canada found a diamond and he used his microscopes and tools to look inside the diamond and inside he found a little crystal of a mineral called ringwoodite. Now that is not a mineral you're ever gonna see on the surface. I've never seen ringwoodite because that was the first time it was ever found on Earth. And it was inside this diamond from the deep, but this scientist did something else. He used his special tools and he looked in the ringwoodite and guess what he found inside the ringwoodite? He found water, lots of water inside the diamond. And that ringwoodite had all that water, and it was from the deep. And he did some calculations and realized that in the deep mantle, there's probably as much water or more than there is in all the world's oceans. 
Now that doesn't mean that there's a liquid water ocean deep in the earth with fishes and scuba tanks and all that kind of stuff down there. No, no, no. The water isn't liquid. Ringwoodite that he discovered inside that diamond from the kimberlite in the deep earth is another water rock. Remember our water rock? The serpentine? All that water in that serpentine? Well, ringwoodite, this special ringwoodite, has a little bit of water too. Not this much, but it had some and enough to make a huge reservoir of water in the rocks of the mantle. And that was a huge discovery. Now we're trying to figure out how did that water get there? Is it coming out? Is it going in? What is the story from the water in the ringwoodite, in the diamond, from the kimberlite, the messenger from the deep? Diamonds are cool too because you can do other experiments. Because they're so hard, you can take two diamonds together and you can squeeze them together point to point and because they're so hard and strong, you can squeeze them so hard and you can create pressures in the middle of the diamond where you put stuff between those diamonds that are as high pressure as the center of the earth. And mineral physicists do these experiments with their diamond like an anvil pushing together on that stuff. And they use lasers and they use x-ray beams to look at what's happening to the stuff in between those diamonds. These are experiments that are simulating the deep, hot Earth's interior with diamonds and lasers and x-rays to tell us what we find. So we have messengers from the deep in natural diamonds that tell stories about oceans worth of water locked in the rocks of the mantle. And we can use diamonds to create experiments and simulate those deep, planetary interior conditions and what kind of minerals and wonders await us by using lasers and x-rays to study those materials. The one last thing I want to show you, I told you diamonds are rare and it's hard to find a big one. Well, I do have this. You might have noticed. This is not a real diamond, but this is a replica of a real diamond called the Cullinan Diamond. And it's a real diamond that was really found. You can see it's over 3,000 carats. That's huge. And it was found in 1905, and it was really this big. Can you imagine that? Now, a friend of mine won this in a contest, and he gave it to me as a gift. And so I keep it in my office, and I'm here to share it with you now. I love the fact that I can have gifts that I've gotten from other friends, and I can share those stories with you, too. Imagine finding a diamond like this. I bet they wanted to make a lot of diamond rings out of this. Or maybe... You'd want to look in there carefully. Look in there with your hand lens and ask yourself, what is the story of this diamond? I wonder what secret messages from the deep this diamond has locked inside. And we can use our tools, our microscopes, our lasers, and our x-rays to figure out what are the messages locked inside these messengers from the deep called diamonds. I hope you like this story, and I hope I see you at my next Every Rock Has a Story video. Bye-bye.